Whether you have a job, run a business, or care about the stability of our society, the impact of AI on jobs is one of the most important topics of the moment. One of the top leaders in the IMF warned this week that AI will lead to substantial disruption in labour markets. That means job cuts and loads of them. How many? Well, she referenced the Goldman Sachs study that estimated 300 million jobs around the world would be exposed to automation. But perhaps more concerning for workers is that she cautioned against assuming those being displaced by AI would find more productive work elsewhere. She referenced automation in manufacturing and in particular workers being laid off from car production lines struggling to find other work. Okay, so perhaps it's no wonder that we're expecting jobs to be lost to AI. After all, that's kind of the point of technological shifts, right? New technology comes along and does the things that humans had to do manually beforehand, thus we all get a productivity boost. That's kind of the point. Maybe so, but it's actually the speed of this shift that's got governments and policymakers worried about the impact of jobs with AI. And the public seems to agree, with a recent UK survey showing that 60% of people would like to see the UK government regulate the use of generative AI to help safeguard jobs. Okay, but what's actually happening now? Are all of these predictions just fear-mongering and hype about AI, and actually we don't need to worry about this stuff? Well, well, not quite. Let's take a look at what's actually happening out there in the big wide world just so far in 2023. BT has announced 55,000 job cuts, with about 10,000 of those being lost to AI. We've seen job cut announcements from Siemens, General Motors, Walmart, General Electric, Citigroup, Alphabet, who owns Google, IBM, who expects to replace 30% of their back office jobs, that's around 7,800 jobs, with AI in just the next five years. In fact, data from the last month indicates that jobs are already being lost on a monthly basis to AI. The Challenger job report for the first time reported on jobs lost to artificial intelligence and gave the number at 3,900 just in May alone. This is around 5% of all the jobs lost in the US in that month and puts artificial intelligence as the seventh largest source of job losses. Let's not forget that generative AI has only really been on most people's radars for about six months and most of the most popular tools today are still in beta stage. To see this scale of job losses for a technology that is so new and is as yet to be adopted by so many businesses is quite extraordinary. So we know job losses are already here, we know that more are going to be coming, but which types of jobs are going to be most impacted and what does the data tell us about how the future of work is going to evolve? After all, if you're a worker, you don't want to be in a job or career that you know is going to be replaced. And if you're a company, you don't want to adapt to this technology too slowly and risk being left behind by AI integrated competitors that can offer your products and services better, faster and cheaper because they're using automation. Well, in this webinar from Scale AI, which is a company that deploys AI systems to enterprise, their VP of Enterprise AI mentions that they're seeing similar use cases across industry for their AI technology. And these are co-pilots, and customer engagement. So let's discuss them in turn and look at how the implication of AI in these areas will impact jobs. Copilots are AI that workers can use that sit inside the applications that they're already using to help them be more productive. For example, completing text or retrieving information or processing data, summarizing documents. And many of the large technology companies are already working on Copilot software that they are building into their systems. For example, back in March, Microsoft announced a Microsoft 365 Copilot, and they demoed it doing things like generating text, making presentations, designing presentations, and analyzing data in Excel. Google then announced Duet AI for Workspace, which is basically the same thing for Google Apps. And then Microsoft even announced Windows Copilot. So this is a Copilot software that sits on your computer at the operating system level to help you work across all the files and apps on your computer. Given that all the major tech platforms are rolling out Copilots as part of their enterprise software suites, it's likely that this sort of autopilot technology is going to become as widespread as, say, autocorrect in the near future. So what does this actually mean for workers, for the people who are using this copilot technology? Well, the evidence so far points to copilots making workers significantly more productive. This research paper on the impact of GitHub copilot, which is a copilot for the coding platform GitHub, found that using a copilot basically 
half the amount of time it took coders to complete a certain task. What's more, it was less skilled developers that saw the greatest benefit. Now, whether this actually leads to job losses or it just leads to workers being able to spend their time on more productive tasks is still a bit of an unknown. Conventional wisdom seems to be that this is going to free people up to do more creative and productive work, removing some of the drudgery of their tasks. And that's a position taken by Walmart's Donna Morris in this Wall Street Journal podcast. Powered by AI is an AI consultancy that helps businesses get to grips with the world of AI and build it into their processes to make them more efficient and productive. We also run a weekly newsletter keeping businesses up to date with the latest goings on in the world of AI. To subscribe completely free of charge, head over to our website at pbai.co. So that's the co-pilot use case, but what about customer engagement? Well, here things don't look so positive for workers in this space. Accenture estimates that 95% of customer interactions are expected to be AI enabled by 25%. Now, whilst they're careful to talk about equipping agents and enhancing their abilities, it's fairly clear that they're anticipating job losses. If we look at some of the statistics here, a 10 to 40% reduction in overall expenses when implementing AI customer experience. Now, given that most of the cost in customer experience is the people staffing those interactions, that's job now, if as a consumer, the idea of talking to a robot rather than a human terrifies you, fear not. Apparently, you're going to be three times as happy and spend five to 15% more over the course of your lifetime with companies that use AI in their customer experience versus companies that don't. But let's be clear, this is fairly bad news for customer experience workers who lose on basically every metric. Okay, so how soon is all of this coming? Well, in their 2023 AI readiness report, Scale AI give us some clues. Amongst the businesses that they surveyed, 59% view AI as critical or highly critical in the next year and 69% view it as critical or highly critical in the next three years. And their survey respondents across every industry expected to be spending more on AI over the next three years. Now, whilst there might not be surprising to know that large companies are investing huge amounts of money in AI, we've seen announcements from like PwC investing a billion dollars in their AI program. This survey data comes from companies of all sizes. So it just demonstrates the resource that companies of all sizes are putting behind adopting AI. But that's not even the most interesting or surprising data in this survey. They also asked what outcomes are achieved by companies that are adopting AI. Now amongst these, we saw the sort of expected answers like customer experience or organizational process efficiency. But we've already talked about customer experience and how AI is expected to impact that. So that wasn't too much of a surprise. What is more of a surprise Surprise is the 89% of respondents who said that AI adoption had given them the ability to develop new products or services, or the 76% that said it had increased their collaboration across business functions, or even the 74% that said it had improved their strategic decision making. These are all use cases and benefits of AI that are way outside the conventional wisdom of it coming for, you know, the white collar back office jobs like HR and finance and customer experience. So whilst it's important to to know that this survey was of people already working in AI, so there's going to be some selection bias there. I think this data is really interesting because it implies that there is perhaps some downstream impact of AI that won't yet be being felt in the job numbers, but actually that this technology could be reaching further into the organization than we might anticipate. So then, which jobs is AI coming for first? Well, I think we really have two categories. In the first category, we have jobs like customer experience, where AI can be a direct replacement. Then we have the jobs that can be enhanced by AI, roles that we use co-pilots to do things like strategic decision making and product and service discovery, helping us collaborate with other people in our teams and other AI agents. And I think it's this group of job roles and workers that there are big question marks over. Will the AI make this group more productive? Will it mean that they can spend their time doing more creative work and increase the output of the company? Or will it simply mean that we need fewer of these people in the organization to continue with the progress it needs? To an extent, the question about 
whether this technology will replace some of those workers or just enhance them to improve total output really depends on how businesses are able to integrate AI and implement it in their organizations. Going from testing this technology to actually building it into workflows and making it a part of the organization's routine is a huge step. And of course, training and adapting the workforce to use this tech is not going to be without its hurdles. But one thing's for sure, the world of work is not going to be the same as a result of AI. And it's going to be very difficult to predict really far out the impact that AI will have on work. But the businesses that win from this will be the ones that can adapt and build this technology into their processes and into their workforces. It's one thing to experiment and test, but it has to be part of a system and a process and the workforce might have to be redesigned as a result of that. Thanks for watching and let us know in the comments, what are your predictions for the future of work and which job roles are you most expecting to see replaced in the next year?